So the last video I did, uh, I showed that little rebar bending die I had made. This was the, the top punch. Um, I've made some other homemade dies and I probably should have showed those in that video. Um, <laughs> it's not this. The, the only, um, you know, store-bought or whatever material or uh, tooling I have is, is I bought eight, eight feet of this, um, this acute die. Um, I had a project where I needed to bend, you know, quite a ways past 90 degrees. Um, so this um, width was set up for basically a 10 gauge. Um, and that's kind of a bummer having a press brake is in reality, you should have a top and bottom die for every material thick thickness. Um, as far as I understand it, you know, I'm not an expert, but the radius of the punch should match the material thickness. And then the width of the V die is supposed to be um, eight times the material thickness. You know, so for quarter inch, you need a two inch wide die. For eighth inch, you need a one inch wide die. Um, and that trend continues on until you get to pretty thick. And then I think the rule of thumb goes to like 10 times material thickness for the V die. So um, luckily for me, a lot of the work I do, um, I do a lot of kind of off-road performance stuff, off-road suspensions, bumpers, stuff like that. But um, I do a lot, of, a lot of other projects as well. So I've got a whole bunch of parts to bend um, that are thicker than what this is good for. And so I have a couple different dies that I made. So if I didn't say before, you know, this is all homemade stuff, but this is basically built to take the old American standard style tooling, which for me was the simplest. You just basically need a half inch wide groove, um, three quarter thick, or uh, three quarter deep, um, or maybe it's five eighths, I don't know. I made mine one inch deep just to be safe. Um, so for these dies, This is just a whole bunch of quarter inch pieces stacked up and welded together. Um, Cause if you've ever shopped for this stuff before, it is extremely expensive. So for, you know, one-off jobs or things I don't do very often, it's just not worth it um, to spend that kind of money on, on something that's just not gonna pencil out. So I've made these. Um, luckily for me, I have my own CNC plasma table. But um, nowadays with, you know, like send, cut, send, and there's a whole bunch of um, online laser cutting services, you could easily make your own dies. Um, and, and laser cutting would be far superior to plasma cutting. These are kind of a pain to make just because of the small inconsistencies in plasma. Um, I build mine. I don't know where I came up with this this angle probably just picked it out of thin air, but I go, I make these 75 degrees. So it's tighter than 90. So that way, if I need to bend something past 90 up to, you know, that amount, basically I can. And then plus, you know, your material always has a certain amount of spring back. And so, uh, in air bending. So I build them at 75 degrees. Um, so I've got this one, this one, is two and a half inches and then I have this is kind of one of the first ones so it's a lot more crude it's kind of more of a proof of concept um, this one's two inch so this is the one I use for quarter um, and I just make them in one foot long sections um, you see this one's pretty ugly pretty rough and then later I try to make them pretty so I uh, you know radius the corners nicer and then if you can really see it right there you can in the drawing i plasma cut in a little valley so that way that gives me somewhere to put the weld and i can grind it grind it off and still have most of the weld there it just makes it uh, a little more friendly to your fingers and just a nicer looking part so 
So I've made these, I made a couple different bottom V's and then I had a project where I needed a gooseneck die. And uh, so you can see the center of that upper tang to the center of the V, you can see it, it's, it's that way of center line, you know, the main body of it. And that makes it to where you can bend um, like channels. You know, say you, you bend one bend and you get, a, you get a flange and then you turn the part around and you put it in and you bend it like this, as this comes up, you know, depending on the length of these legs, often they can hit, as it comes up, it can hit the die before you reach your desired angle. So with this material removed, it gives it space for that to happen. Um, I was a little skeptical of this working. Um, I made it pretty beefy. I think this is about two inches, about two inches thick. Um, and the, the parts I was making was just three sixteenths by about six inches long. Um, but it's it held up pretty good. Um, and luckily this is just mild steel. Um, and so it's not gonna like shatter and shoot pieces. If anything, this would just f bend and you know, it'd be garbage at that point, but I don't see any danger in, in this. And again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push, I would never bend anything more than three sixteenths with this. Um, I think that's really all the dies I have right now that are, that I've made. Um, I'm working on, um, some like flattening dies. Uh, I've got to finish up. But anyway, if you've got a, got a press break or, you know, you're building your own or whatever, this is a pretty viable option to save some money. Um, and this guy's actually got hundreds and hundreds of bins on it and you know it's it's holding up nice the 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 drawback of these is if you're building really uh you know cosmetically important parts when you when you bend you're always going to get marks from here um but these are it's a, it's a lot worse with these it scars up the surface a bit more than normal you know i've tried to every once in a while hit this with a flap wheel and kind of smooth it out um, especially like this guy. Um, if the cut quality isn't really good on the plasma, it, it gets worse. You can kind of see some of these were got kind of a, an angled cut to them. And so it takes a lot more time to get it cleaned up. So anyway, I just thought I would share that. Um, def definitely an option. And, uh, you know, I don't know what... This would be probably 50 bucks in, in quarter inch material to make this. And if you hunt around to buy this stuff, it's, it's definitely more than that. One thing to keep in mind too, I can, uh, the steel yard where I buy um, some of my material also has like a scrap section. And I found this, this was about a five foot long piece of, uh, it's a three quarter inch wide. And I got this for scrap value, so it's definitely something to keep an eye on. When I saw that, I just, man, I grabbed that and ran. Threw it on scale as quick as I could and paid for it <laughs> before somebody else saw it. Um, so, yeah. I guess that's it. I'm going to get this, uh, i to do some changing here, get this set up. These parts um, get bent basically into a channel. So I'm gonna work on that. And uh, again, if anybody's got any questions, or details they wanna know about this thing, let me know. Thanks for watching.